Studio engineers holding session files ransom. Holding it hostage until you pay me, right? Usually more than what was actually agreed to. I copyrighted a song with a famous artist and now she doesn't want to release it. You know, creatives, I love them to death. And they're just like, let's do this thing. We come up with something great. No one talks about anything. They're scared of conversations. Could you copyright the vocals and arrangement separately? So, yeah, this this question comes up. You can copyright in all the different pieces, but if you do if you do it as like the final version, it includes the lyrics, it includes the melodies. You know what I'm saying? So it includes everything. So some people are like, oh, I just want to copyright the lyrics separately. That's cool. But if you're going to copyright the entire song, the lyrics are included as part of the song. If you were to copyright the song and, you know, you let's say you have the lyrics set in and you copyright it and then later on you decide you're going to release it later and you're like, oh, I'm going to change the total arrangement of the song. I might change some lyrics. Would you have them update that copyright or would you just be like, oh, oh, that's good. It's, you know, even if the instrumental or the chords, they decided to change. Additional versions are different versions. So you want to copyright all the different versions. Thoughts on studio engineers holding session files ransom? Isn't that illegal once an engineer or a studio was paid for the session? Great question. Oh boy, man. And and uh, as an entertainment attorney, especially in the, the land of not just music, but film, man, can I tell you how many editors will hold footage hostage? It's, it's, it's something I deal with all the time. So uh, obviously there's there's problems, right? And so we have to deal with this usually through demand letters and it can be helpful you you know you hire an attorney and they send a scary letter and it gets the other person because usually they're like i'm holding it hostage until you pay me right usually more than what was actually agreed to and so you have a possession issue and you know when it comes to like real property can you call the police and be like hey they have my yes you can but practically speaking the police are going to say well this is a civil, civil matter. matter you need to sue them you know and and so anyway the point is it's a no-no and if you're dealing with that you actually want to speak with legal counsel it's going to be sure. the fastest way to actually get you know the footage back or get. studio session make sure that you see what's in you know you guys have that contract written up when you're working with these people and you know what's in it and those kind of things are talked about and if they're not in there suggest them um yeah absolutely though get get uh, an attorney if, if, if people are playing games because there's because they're just people like all these guys are just like people and stuff and, and some of them are shady and every some of them are completely reputable but you never know how people do their business and try to try to tough guy you or whatever it is and you know you got to know your rights and, and protect yourself and not be afraid to do what you got to do should i put my name out there instagram youtube etc before my trademark gets approved or is it risky yeah, great question. When it comes to trademarks, guys, you want to use your trademark in association to the stuff you're doing, music, live performances, as soon as possible. Okay. And the reason why is because as soon as you start using your trademark, you start developing common law trademark rights. And so if you give me a call, Crystal, I want you to help me register my, my trademark. I'm always going to say, great, if you're in the US, we want to do federal registration. It covers the entire US. And we always want to go back as early as possible to when you first started using it to prove you should be the only one using it. So some people are like, no, I want to like, you know, hide it. I don't want anyone to know that this is the name I'm using just yet. And I, I'm like, actually, it's the opposite when it comes to the law. They, you know, whoever uses it first gets it, so to speak. So, um, yes, you actually do want to start using it, put it out there, get the social media handles, do all the things as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, because it could take a while for your trademark to get approved and stuff, and you don't want someone to, you know, get your band name. Lock it, lock your lock your artist name in, lock it in before somebody else swoops it up. Yeah, the typical processing time, as I'll call it, is about a year from when you from when you file for getting the federal registration, and that's assuming you don't run into problems. So you know, understand it takes a long time. So a start the process as soon as possible. B Start using your trademark as soon as possible. If your trademark application is rejected, should you change your artist name right away? No, not necessarily, right? Because if you get a rejection, it's the examiner, the person who looked at your application, who's going to maybe pick out a problem. And sometimes those problems are easy to overcome. Other times, and this is why it's really good to have an attorney representing you, you know, we have to just make legal arguments to overcome the problems. And with my office anyway, we have a very high success rate for overcoming any kind of issues we run into. It's also because we do our due diligence up front to make sure there's no problems. We're out the gate, but no. How long does it take for you to submit 
the trademark filing. So for our office, actually, by the time we get everything we need from our client, we file it within usually like one to two business days. So we're extremely fast because that's just how we roll. Um, but that's also because we're like, we don't want it to take forever. We know once we file, it's going to sit there for a long time. So we don't have any delay on move. our side. Yeah. <laughs> how does an engineer recording engineer get their credits on the record? So usually you want to do this by agreements, guys. So, you know, verbal agreements, handshake deals, those are all enforceable by law. If you and I have a deal and I'm like, hey, I'm going to, you know, put you on and I'm, I'm, I'm promising you this stuff and, you know, exchange for your services and all stuff. Um, that is enforceable. But the way to like meaningfully do this and get your stuff where it needs to go is like have a contract. Just make sure whatever you agree to is written down, sign it with the other person. But like just by doing that, it forces you to talk about yeah. the agreed upon terms because yeah. people are just like they're, you know, creatives. I love them to death. And they're just like, let's do this thing. We come up with something great. No one talks about anything. They're scared of conversations. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, the final product that you come up with, this is a business asset. And so we that's why we do have to think in this business mind framework. So anyway, quick and easy. Just make sure you actually, you know, write it down, have an agreement get a split sheet yeah absolutely and i'll tell you what we just released a video on the channel that in the pinned comment is a link to a split sheet template so you can just get that for free so if you need a split sheet um go look for that it's you'll see it right there it's split sheets like one of the last three videos that we released but that will take care of that become your own record label which is literally if you're like hey i want to start a record label cool i got you understand the entire music business i want to set up my llc i want to do the marketing it's a lot so for example sync licensing for example music marketing it's significantly cheaper than anything you would ever get from a law firm as far as all the stuff that comes with it and you want to make six figures from your music career and you want to do this for real like i'm going to give you what you need I copyrighted a song with a famous artist and now she doesn't want to release it. I never had her sign a release, but I register as a 50% order. What are my rights? Oh man, that's a bummer. I've had that yeah. happen with one of our clients. And if she has not given you permission and you don't have it in writing that you already like by doing it, you own the thing, you have the publicity rights. Like, unfortunately you're exposing yourself to issues if you release it. You know, might she, might she not do something? Who knows? But I just, you know, you are exposing yourself to potential issues if it's, if everything is not buttoned up already in a contract. And I've had, you know, clients who pay for premium features, and this exact thing happens. That's tough. That 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 is super tough, and that that's that's incredibly heartbreaking, especially if you're really into, you know, the stuff that you guys wrote together. Um, that's rough. That's rough. Questions. How do you whitelist your content with your social channels? I believe we talked about this on uh, Symphonic. We did. Yeah. So if you, you know, where this came up for me is when I was with Symphonic, I was doing a CD release during COVID on Instagram, on Facebook. So you email your distributor and you say, hey, can you whitelist my channel? Right. So in case you've opted into content ID so you can track the music and that kind of thing. So you don't get a copyright you know, strike or claim. So you email your distributor and they are supposed to take it from there. Supposed to. Supposed to. What is the best way to contact you for a consultation? So you can just Google Delgado Entertainment Law uh, and then you can just, there's a contact form so you can just send a message and we'll get you set up. Also, you can always reach out on Instagram too, Top Music Attorney on Instagram as well. A big Sacramento radio station is holding a jingle contest where the rules state they will own all not winning submissions without compensation that sounds shady can they do this i would imagine so they can do whatever they want it's their contest i mean you're opting and into they it. will own all not winning submissions without compensation well well no, no not well, that but no but do what they want with your <laughs> stuff yeah maybe not well that. and the reason and guys this is your this is your super pro tip that's missed so much it's if you if you don't have something in a signed writing saying that there's a transference of the copyright, then under copyright law, there's no transfer. Now, if you are submitting and it's like, hey, here's our terms of services by clicking this and you agree. And in that it says, by submitting your song to us, you are assigning your copyright to us. Would that be legally enforceable? Probably. So it's really important that you just be very careful if they're like, oh, just email us. You email your song. You know, is that the same thing? Are you transferring legally under copyright? No, you have to actually sign something ascend you know or ascend to 
the transference. I don't know. That sounds a little shady, though. <laughs> in general. A, he added, uh, non-winners will become the sole property of the station and may be used by the station in any means it deems desirable mm -hmm. now or in the mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I, but, but that's, isn't that, I would assume that that would be what it is. If you're sending, if you're submitting your songs for like some kind of radio contest where like maybe they're taking listeners to pick the view, the list, the, you know, who wins and stuff and they're voting on it or whatever. If they wanted to use your song in the future to, you know, let's say they do a rerun of that segment, you know, like, you know, when the Howard Stern show would do like all kinds of jingles and stuff like that, they would have contests, they would still play the ones that wouldn't win throughout the show. I would imagine that that's more what they mean, but always read your terms of service because, you know, if, if you're not comfortable with something, I mean, don't opt into it. I would think. Yeah. But guys, I mean, in general, if you are submitting for a contest and they're saying we're going to own it, regardless of whether it's legally enforceable or not, I just don't like that. Uh, hello. Do you recommend copywriting a sound recording of the lyrics before pitching it to anyone so at least the melody and lyrics are protected? Well, no, it, it also depends where you're at on the distribution of the song. So if you so so here's something to think about. I've had clients who will have like a song or a movie or just something that they are sending around like internally for consideration and and so sometimes in those cases we want to not only copyright but we want to have the other side sign a non-disclosure agreement so it just kind of depends if it's something that you've already published you already released it then we don't have to kind of you know go about it you know so complicated like but you definitely want to register your stuff as soon as possible right it, especially because if someone steals your copyright mm -hmm. in order for you to call me and for me to now go file a lawsuit on your behalf, you need to have the copyright registration. So as soon as you're either- You wanna get those damages. It, you wanna get those damages and lawyer's fees. Too. That's right. Yeah, so the answer is you definitely want, and this is my rule. By the time you've released a song within the first month, you absolutely should have the registration through the copyright office. You can do a pre-registration, right, of the copyright uh, if you are gonna be kind of like pushing it around for consideration. So pro tips.